and give a big, very noisy, very large round of applause. Come on out, please, Anthony Michael Hall, Barry LeBron, and Alan Mitchell Smith. Answered, this is your chance. You can just park yourself right over there at that microphone. When you go back, I'm just trying to think, you know, when I when I was growing up and watching the movies that you were all in, it was it was such a wonderful time. The movies were almost simple in terms of the story they were telling, but yet deep, I mean, I'm not trying to like, but deeply profound in the way they were talking about relationships and bullying and the Breakfast Club, and just all of that. When you look at modern movies to this day, and you think back to then, what was the favorite part of doing that type of work in the 80s for you guys? Good night, everybody. Great being here. Just working with the kind of talented people that were around there, the way they portray families. Uh, John Hughes was a dynamo and extraordinary, and you know more about it because we did many films with him. Was he was a great guy. He uh, he had fun with the process. You know, we had a great time on set. He was really cool about it all. Gave us a lot of room to breathe and room to play. And, and he was really something else. He really was. He was a great guy. Well, I think the innocence of these films is what's so magic. We've all been so spoiled and inundated with images in our face. I like the face of the 80s because it was slower and it just seemed more magical. When you first got the, the script and you were reading through it for, for Weird Science, did you, in the moment compared to some of the other uh, films that were out there, did you say to yourself, you know, this, this is gonna go somewhere, or did you say, oh, all right, we're just gonna take a, a chance on this? What were your thoughts as you were reading through the material? I can't read. <laughs> I, I actually don't even remember reading the script yeah. because I went into the film after it had already been filming, so I think I probably only read my own role. But you guys have already been filming for three weeks, so. Yeah. You remember reading it? Yeah, I, I thought it was really funny. Uh, and I, you know, when I was auditioning for it, I uh, was just hoping to be included in it because I thought it was, uh, I mean, all of, all of John Hughes' movies were great. And they, um, <laughs> And so I, it wasn't. I, it wasn't like I had a sense that this was going to be above and beyond those, but I just wanted to be part of it because it seemed like it would be a great project. I was thinking award series, uh, <laughs> Emmys, uh, no, I'm just kidding. no. You know what? We really didn't know what the hell we were doing. And John, none of us can really anticipate success when it shows up as a nice surprise. But John was such a great guy. He was a great guy to collaborate with. He set the right tone on the set. He was always kind of conspiring with us, making us laugh. And really just being a, you know, a great guy. You know, so well, we were all really spoiled by working with him. You but know, he was like a right. kid. He was a big kid, totally. He loved music, he wrote to music, and he was just really um, always our first audience, too, because this was before Video Village. So he would like really sit next to the camera and kind of just you know, encourage us through the takes and whatever we were doing. So he was something else. We love you and miss you, John. We wouldn't be in this convention center without you. <laughs> <laughs> were, were you actually driving a Porsche? <laughs> I'm trying to decide. Like, was he? Was he doing it? Was he? Um, you know what? We did. We had. I did. I, I you did. Drive. I, I didn't drive anything. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in my country. No, I. Um, yeah, well, I drove the car from the Porsche a little bit. The Ferrari. I think they reserved that for a stunt. They knew I would drive. <laughs> you get this one. You were underage, right? Yeah. Go ahead. We have a question over here. Uh, for Anthony, uh, what memories or stories? first come to mind when you think about your time on Edward Scissorhands? Oh, on Edward Scissorhands. Well, on that one, I got to meet and work with uh, Tim Burton, who was quite an interesting guy. And I think it was a few weeks into the film when I kind of figured out, I think, that he was kind of Edward Scissorhands in a way, you know? He, he grew up as a, a student of animation. He was kind of an outcast guy, you know? And um, very interesting guy. I loved working with him and a great artist. 
and very kind of quiet when you work with him, but then when he comes alive is when he's doing the work, you know, when he was directing and stuff. So he was a great guy to work with. Thanks for your question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Nice green hair. Let's give it up for his green hair right now. Okay. Very, very nice hair. Hi. I'm a huge fan of all of the movies that you guys have done. Um, how much fun was it to do the very end? I do have just a couple questions, but the very end scenes of um, with the bikers and the, oh, yeah. the big old puss chat and all of that. <laughs> oh, I did it away, though. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> uh, I mean, it, 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 yeah, obviously it was a lot of fun, and all those people were great. I mean, I guess um, for me, I, I I don't know if the filming of it was as fun as the watching of it, just because a lot of the effects and the music aren't there. But um, for me, in thinking back, uh, Michael Berryman, the the guy with no hair, was <coughs> the sweetest guy in the world. I know, and just it's just a treat to be around him. Um, uh, and Vernon Wells was so great. And I just have uh, really warm feelings for all the people involved in it. And so that, I guess that's what I took away from it, besides like um, that it looked really cool, you know? Yeah, that was awesome. And then, Anthony, how was it what, oh, like working with Chevy Chase during vacation? Cause, and then uh, 16 Candles was also one of, like, yeah. I watch all the time, but like, Chevy this, Chase. This crew was a lot more fun to work with Chevy Chase was. Okay, <laughs> just gonna say that right now. I don't care if he's watching. I'm just gonna say it. There you go. I said it. I had a lot more fun with these people. Chevy was great too. I, I looked up to him, and I still do. Because uh, he's taller. That's right. Very good. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, no, he was cool to work with. He was. He was fun. You know. I mean, I grew up idolizing all those people in SNL, and I loved all that. You know, as a kid in the '70s, and um, yeah, he was a lot of fun to work with. But we had more fun than this. And my last question. Whose idea was it for the bras on the head? Mm -hmm. that, was, that was John, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He must have been a thick man. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much, my dear. Sixteen Candles is one of those movies when I, if I'm at home flipping channels, it's the one you stop. Like it cool. becomes on. Yeah, that's <laughs> like, great movie. Me too. No. Oh, I my account when I see it on. I go, wait a minute. Exactly. <laughs> How, when, was the, when was the last time you guys actually sat and watched one of the movies? It, it, I mean, at some point you've seen it, you know the material. Do you ever go back and watch it again, or are you done watching it? I don't. I like the surprise of seeing it when it's on TV. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and then I call my account. <laughs> I don't have TV, so... I can't watch it. There you go. Okay. I know. Uh, I know there was a time that my kids um, watched Weird Science, but I don't think that I was there for it. And I like I, I I guess I'm not that comfortable watching it. But I find myself like every once in a while doing a thing for a thing where it's shown and I'm and I'm talking about it. And so um, I feel like every couple of years I, I watch it and like or it and Pretty in Pink, which is what happened last time. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Hi there. First, uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, I love all of you together on Weird Science. I grew up with it. Uh, I also so glad you liked it, man. I also love you guys individually. Uh, Anthony, I love you on Dead Zone so much. Thank you. Uh, I really one of my favorite characters on uh, Weird Science was Chet. So I was wondering, do you have any like maybe stories to share about the impact? Just how sad it is yeah. that he's passed. Uh, he yeah. was just a sweetheart, just the nicest man. Um, none of us knew he was sick, he, but he was born with the problem in his heart, no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You would never know that. No, no, never at all. He was a tough guy too. I mean, like the sweetest guy, but he, you know, grew up roughnecking and all kinds of, um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thanks. I uh, love all you guys. Uh, I was wondering what it's like, what it was like to work with uh, Robert Downey Jr. back in the day. Who? That <laughs> bastard owes me money. Wait a minute. I told him. <laughs> He was a great guy. He still is a great guy, you know? Yeah, but it was a wild ride. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, He's it's, yeah. It was a lot of fun, but uh, yeah. And uh, Anthony, you did SNL with him too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. for a year. That's fun. Yeah, that was, that was great. Yeah, he's a great guy, he really is. He has a great company now with his wife that he runs, and he's doing pretty well. You, at you're working awesome. with him a bit, no? Yeah, yeah. We wrote, we wrote a show that we're going to be producing together. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, so he's a great guy, and he really is. He hasn't changed, he's like the 500 million he has in a bank right now. <laughs> it's 500 million, I gotta call him about it. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot, man. Yeah, I just wanna ask uh, Kelly, what was it like working with Gene Wilder and uh, Gilda? It was, I, I could never have asked or dreamt for 
first movie to be so incredible. I mean, I was a big Willy Wonka fan, and here I am doing my first film with Willy Wonka. Um, he was, Gilda was very, very generous. She sent me flowers on my first day. She wrote me little love notes. She was just an extraordinary woman and person, and her and Jean, we, we traveled all over Europe together promoting the film, and it was downhill from there. I mean, we just, that was an extraordinary experience, so thank that you. Great movie. I also want to say Chocolate War is absolutely amazing. It's one of the most important movies to me as a high schooler. Thanks. Like rebelling against the system, and Out of Bounds is fucking rad, and I can't believe it is. <laughs> it, it's one of those movies I can't believe it's still not really on DVD, and it should be like a special edition Blu-ray. That movie is awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks a lot, man. Hi. Hi. Um, Hi. First, I love you guys. You're so awesome. Thank you. Um, now I have two questions because I want to know, do you really have Robert Downey Jr. on your phone? Yeah, should we call him? <laughs> yeah! Know what I'm saying? Let's see. We've got people for voicemail, too. <laughs> okay, down. Let's see if this works out. If not, we try. Okay. <laughs> That's a whole other type of drop the mic, isn't it? Yeah, all the time. Tell them about the pasties on the nipples when we did the shower. <laughs> I could have killed these two. We were in the shower for days. It was a very, very short scene, but they got the giggles. <laughs> because I had band-aids here, and I had nasty underwear on because I didn't want them to be able to use anything. So, But these guys were just giggling. See what I mean, guys? Perfect memory from my vantage point. <laughs> I don't have one issue with that memory. What about you, Alon? I'll toss to you, brother. Yeah, we weren't suave, right? Like, <laughs> we didn't have game. It's not like, you know what I mean? We're 15, she's not 15, obviously. So, yeah, it was great. Uh, I was nervous a lot of the time, because um, Kelly is so beautiful, and she always was. Uh, but it was really a treat to be able to work with her. I love Sharon with you. I was actually wearing a diaper, from my point of view, at the time. I was just... Nobody asked, but I was wearing the diaper. Anyway. Hey, Anthony, can I ask you a question? I've always... Okay, I'm a kid of the 70s and a teenager of the 80s, and you were in all those cool movies that I loved, but you did something that I grew up dreaming of, and you went and did it after you went through the, the film circuit. You, you, you went back and you became part of SNL. Can you expand on that? Because I was like, God, is there anything he hasn't done that's cool? <laughs> no, it was a great experience. I mean, like yourself, we were probably the same age, man. I grew up watching the original cast in the 70s and loved it. Um, and I was just thrilled to, when I got asked to do the show, you know. Unfortunately, it was one of the worst seasons in the 45-year history of the show. <laughs> but looking back, no, but I was really happy. I remember being really excited and nervous because what it meant to me, like yourself, you know, I'd be there, you know, it was one of those shows you had to ask mom if you could stay up, you know, one of those deals. Yeah, man, so it meant the world to me, you know, and all these years later, it still was a, a great uh, privilege to be a part of it. Thanks for doing it. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, my uh, question was for Anthony. My... All right. So I'll see if he's here. All right. Th <laughs> thank you. Um, so I know it's kind of like a weird, like, cheesy thing to ask actors to... to do lines from their movies, but That's could okay. you, let's go right into could one. You, could you, to the best of your ability, sure. reenact the drunk scene from Weird Science? <laughs> Man! What did it to me was these big titties she had. <laughs> Tasty on the titties. When I was younger, like yourself, I had, I had the, the range. I think it's gone, but anyway, thank you. By the way, some very impressive facial hair for such okay. a young man. Very good. Okay, very good, very good. Thanks for your question. All right, brother. Here she is, Supernatural. 
How are you? I'm good. Uh, I'm Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi, Hi Carrie. Sorry. I have an, a question for you, Anthony. And so I'm a big fan of psych, and I'm a big fan of you. How did you like working on psych with uh, James and Rodan? And do, yeah, yeah. They were cool. They were really good. I mean, a lot of the crew had actually worked on Dead Zone, so we had, you know, I knew a lot of the people that were working Dead on the Zone. show, and it was a lot of fun to be a part of. And uh, there was another show that I did recently, well, a couple years back, called Community, and Psych reminded me of that. Like, the writing was so good, really funny, that it was almost like jogging to keep up with it. You know what I mean? As a performer, and also just being a fan of the show. So I really liked the writing on that show, and I had a good time. I did a couple episodes of it in Vancouver. Yeah. It, it was so great. I really enjoyed those. Thanks episodes. a lot. Yeah, it was fun to be a part of. Thank you. Appreciate it. What kind of movies do you find yourself wanting to go see these days? What are you interested in? Well, I'm a huge nerd, and so um, sci-fi and fantasy have always been my brand, and so I'm down for seeing anything, and of course superheroes, because I'm a huge comic book guy too. Um, but, I'm, but I'm weird that way, like I usually like, have a, a complaint about them, you know? And so I'm like on, on Netflix, like turning around, looking like sci-fi fantasy, and then I end up like binging trinkets. I, I don't know what happened, but I could not watch it, you know, so I, <laughs> I don't know what draws me, but uh, yeah, it's not always the thing that I love best. You must be having a field day here then. Oh yeah, I love cons. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah, I just went searching for some dice before we, uh, before we <laughs> came here, yeah. Well, we'll talk, you know, I want to ask you, and then I'm, I'm curious from your perspective too, but when you talk about dice, you're really into tabletop gaming. I am, yeah. You've come to the right place. We just had Will Wheaton on. We yeah. Had, so what is your favorite game to play right now? Uh, there, there's too many, and I don't know how many gamers there are in the room, so I don't want to go on for too long, but, um, um, all right, yeah, there are no people. Um, for cooperative party style games, I like a game called Mysterium, and, um, yeah, that's a great game. Um, and then there's just a finished historical the game, version of Pandemic uh, that's set at the fall of Rome, and because I like history, I think that's a fantastic game. I'm really liking 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons, I love playing that, but I also like some... I'm sorry, you said he wasn't going to go on about this. Well, let's, let's, let's kind of lose, shall we? Keep going, Bart. Well, Keep well, going. Yeah, take long until you enjoy it, man. Yeah. Time on our hands. All we got is time here. Come on. Um, so there's a range of role-playing games that I'm also digging. I also like historical and fantasy miniature games, and so I paint miniatures a lot, and I've got a lot of them. That's what I'm enjoying right now. So much to tap into. Yeah, we love it. Great. Yeah, yeah. Yay, gaming. You have come to the right place. What movies are you interested in seeing? I love dark comedies. Uh, anything dark and funny, I like that. Young lady, what's your question? Oh my god, I love the shit out of you guys. You love the shit out of us. <laughs> and here, I was going to ask for earmuffs. Thank you. Potty mouth, okay. Um, Honey, come closer to the mic because I can't hear the shit out of you. Sorry, I'm a fucking leprechaun. Um, anyways, so... She has Tourette's and I think I love it. <laughs> I think I love oh you, but what am I so afraid of? Okay, good. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, you're not. You're releasing the anxiety right now in front of 500 friends. So, not to on you guys, but he's my favorite out of all three of you guys, but I still love you guys so much. You That's guys fair. Like, uh, like, just hearing you talk, Anthony, like, gives me anxiety because I'm like, oh my god, breakfast club. Okay, come up here. We're going to hug it out, and then I want to introduce you to my co-stars. Come on up here. Oh let's go. Let's get up here. Here's yeah. up here. Yeah. Let's get Potty Mouth up here while we need it. Let's hear it from Potty Mouth, everybody. Potty Mouth is in the building. Let's hear it for her. Filthiest mouth in all of Portland. Let's hear it for her. I thought I'd get some potty mouths, but not until this trip. Awesome. Right, come on over here. Drop a couple F-bombs. Ready? We only have a few minutes. She has one more fucking question, then she's gonna be out of here, okay? Air muffs for everybody who's not with it, and let's go. My favorite fucking line from you is in Breakfast Club when you're high as fuck. Right. Can you do that for me? Chips cannot hold their fucking smoke. That's what it is. <laughs> you too. She just thought that was fucking fantastic. That's why everybody knew.
<laughs> and there he goes. And he's off. Thanks very much. We couldn't find a fucking exit until we came back this way. <laughs> We have our ASL signers, by the way, who've been doing a fantastic job of keeping up with all this. You know what I'm saying? Kudos to them. Hi. Yeah, I never knew what the F word looked like in sign language. Yeah, thank you very much. I know, as the beautiful newborn comes to the mic, this is embarrassing, I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to ask you guys, like, what was it through, uh, what was it like having like a breakthrough role, and uh, what was it like getting into acting at such a young age? <laughs> He's got plenty of questions. <laughs> Go for it, Alana. Anybody? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was great. I, I feel, uh, I think anybody who gets an acting at a young age, like, there's some degree of luck, and I feel really lucky to have done it um, and to have been part of it. And that was a great role to, to do, and it's a great role to remember over the years. And they do remember. It's lovely. Yeah, yeah, it really has lasted. He was just squeezing one out, by the way. Did you hear? He left the mic and he was like, <coughs> I love the pen. I don't fucking understand any of you adults. I'm sorry, sir. What were you going to say? Uh, thanks for the photo earlier today from all you guys. Thank you, sir. Uh, you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but my question is, I bought the Weird Science Collector's Edition recently that came out. And it's shit? What happened? Well, well no. Um, I was watching the edited for TV version, which okay. is, in itself is just hilarious. Great. Just the changes. But yeah. that, and it got me wondering, was Weird Science always supposed to be, supposed to be PG-13? or? Wow, good ratings question. This guy's well, no, He's got a brain PG-14. Well, it seems like the perfect movie to be R-rated. Yeah, yeah, no good question. Let's uh, let's call up the MPAA, somebody, please. <laughs> Motion picture department. Oh, that's a good question. No, I don't actually have the answer. I'm sorry, I don't know. Was it PG? I feel like I feel like we were like I feel like we were counting our swears though, weren't we? Okay. Like on, on set, it was like it was, and, and we were counting how we squared, like the manner in which, and the number of, you know, uh, which I think suggested that we were aiming for something. <laughs> Very odd question, and we hope we answered it. Thank you. <laughs> we hope. So, Sir. So, I had a question for you. Um, with 16 Candles, Breakfast Club, Weird Science, was there ever a conversation with John Hughes where you were like, I'm being typecast, when do I get to break out, and did that? Yeah. No, I was just happy. It was, he kept putting me to work. I was just <laughs> grateful for that, you know? And I thought... You know, some of that, I, I'll, I'll admit, I felt a little bit of that right after I'd done those films, but then I just kind of kept working and <laughs> got over it. And then Johnny, Johnny be good. Yeah, man, whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, just have fun, you know, just trying to flow and adapt. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, Kelly and Alana, if I could ask, you guys both seem like, at some point, it seems like you decided to leave Hollywood and all that stuff behind. Is there something that... Keep it up, they're going to leave in about two minutes. No, 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 like, it, Keep that shit up, we're going to leave right now. I think no, we can leave right now. <laughs> if you want, we can leave. I've got your golf cart keys, so... Can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it seemed like a conscious decision. I'm just wondering, is there something that would bring you back? Like, is I'll there tell you what a conscious decision were. Those sexy-ass Elton John glasses you got on. Let's show the crowd. Let's show the crowd those Elton John... Look at them. That was a call. Yeah, that was you awesome. want this laminate and the glasses back, please. Go ahead. No, I mean, is there something that you I just really didn't, like to do? I just didn't want my kids to think that I was anything other than their mother. And it was important to me to be a stay-at-home mom. I didn't feel I could do both. I could always go back to a career, but I could never go back to being a parent. And so I chose that. Okay. <laughs> You know, I don't I don't talk about acting that much in my in my regular life, but when it does come up um, every once in a while, um, people ask me that, and I feel like the, the answer is uh, part of the larger issue being an actor. I think it's been a long time since I was one, but um, like when they when they say is there anything that would pull you back, I think the the idea is that I could make a call and be in movies. And I think what is sometimes missed is how much work there is behind the scenes by actors to like stay good, right? And stay on top of their craft, but also to get work and get the right kind of work. And there's just a lot of, um, there's a lot of work that happens around and before and among 
the appearances in movies and TV. So like if anybody were to call me and say like, hey, if you have these weeks of the summer off, we would like to pay you a lot of money and call you the talent and like and have you appear in this thing. Yeah, of course I would do it. You know what I mean? Like, sure. But as far as like actually um, taking it seriously and doing it, it, um, it, it's not something I'm interested in. I'm sorry, I've taken it. I've never taken it seriously and I'm still doing it. <laughs> no, I would call him home right now, but my mother doesn't talk to me anymore. Okay, do we have any other questions? <laughs> Just trying to lighten it up there, guys. Sorry. Sir, how are you? Doing well. Explain that shirt to us. Uh, this is a, well, it's a shirt for Nelson and Murdoch, uh, attorneys at law in Hell's Kitchen, New York. They're wow. great duo. Cool. Uh, okay. Yeah. Attorneys yeah. at law. All right. Cool. Yeah. Not, a re not real attorneys, but in the conference. Great. So they're wanted in New York for legal fraud. That's good. Okay. <laughs> What's the next question? Um, well, I just want to thank you guys for being here. Um, I had a question about weird science. Uh, uh, one of the things I love about that movie is the special effects and um, some of the things they're able to pull off. And one of my favorite scenes is when Gary and Wyatt are trying to recreate the experiment uh, for, uh, you know, for the bullies. And, and I don't want to spoiler alert, sorry. Um, but uh, anyway, I forget to hook up the doll. And so then the doll is hooked up to a magazine cover of the nuclear missile and it comes through the, the uh, floorboards. And, um, I love that scene. I was just wondering if you guys had, could give us some insight into how that effect was created and um, what it was like on the set. It actually looked kind of cheesy on the set, didn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was funny. Didn't they have a problem like resetting it? Every time we brought it through the floor, it took like an hour and a half for it to be retracted. Well, no, we only had one shot, remember? Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, that's what, this was the fart. What a bad memory, don't I? The story of the fart, right? Oh, my God. I, I, it was somebody, it was one of them. So the, I, we only had one floor, as I remember it. We had one floor, one shot for this thing to come up through. And so we all tried to make a good shot because we couldn't reset it. And somebody farted right before it was gonna happen. We all cracked up. It's probably and I think down we had to do something. They had to do something with reverse and cutting around it or something. <laughs> Must have been you. <laughs> I, I, I fart like daily. And I fart a lot actually. Very nice. But I don't feel bad about it. Thank you for your question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I love it. It's like, spoiler alert, it was 1985. Yeah, exactly. I've been farting since 85. I'm very proud of it. You've probably seen it. Yes, sir. Look at him. He just had a kid. You were just here. He didn't have any children. Look at that. He's fast, this guy. So, I've, I have seen the movie several times, obviously, but I've probably seen the TV series more. So, I was just wondering if, how familiar you are with it, if you think it worked better or worse, or thoughts on it. And if they ever obviously, it was worse. You. <laughs> they never contacted you to be a part of it in any way? Yeah, I turned it down. I Did don't you? really want to do TV. It's too fast-paced and I don't know. I like movies. Cool, thank you. All right, thanks. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm a huge fan. I was wondering if any of you have been like recognized, but recognized as a different celebrity than you were. <laughs> oh, I get it. You look like Kelly LeBrock, only prettier. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thanks. I was to, I, I, somebody, somebody reviewing Weird Science said that I sounded like Shirley Temple. I don't know if that counts. <laughs> She farted a lot, I heard. Shirley Temple was too dramatic with the farts on set. She never get to a dance number in the 30s. I'm sorry. Well, it's fine. I was still listening on the entertainment. Anyway. We're trying, question. bro. We're uh, trying. I, I didn't have a question. I just wanted to make a positive statement. Um, uh, I was about 15, 16 when, that, when the Weird Science came out. And years later, as I was getting into studying different types of spirituality, studying about the sacred feminine it started now that i look at it you know over 40 is taking on a different meaning a deeper meaning because um the character of lisa she there's a lot of character characteristics that represented the archetype of the goddess and one of the things about spirituality is uh, the divine as mother the divine being uh, in the form of the feminine being whatever it is that we need. And so when I look at it now, that's what I saw in the relationship between Lisa and Gary and Wyatt. So I just so that was beautiful. Thank you for that, sir. Beautifully yeah, said. Thanks for saying that. Do you remember what 
what your longest thing on set was? The heart, besides the the one take wonder that you had to nail it someone's heart. Well, that's the great thing with working with kids. You can only work a certain amount of hours. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> our days, our day, we were limited, three and a half hours of work every day, that's what we got. And so, so there weren't a lot of tremendously long days, at least for us. So, mul you, I mean, you did multiple movies and that was the, the, for you, you just had a couple hours every day. That's a blessing when you hear the schedules that folks are doing, turning these days, it's insane. I think it's all a blessing, especially going to Comic-Cons and meeting the audience, because without the audience, there's no knuckleheads on the stage! There's nobody up here! No audience, no us. No, um, I don't know, was there a question? We did, we had limited, we had a great, do we have a uh, tutor that time? Did we have a yeah. tutor? Yeah, we did. What was her name? See, you don't make me feel bad. You don't remember her name either. <laughs> bad, you know, we she had blonde good. hair, and she was really nice. Okay. <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> Let's go with that. Sir. Ah, yes. Um, I remember there was some character that was like the brutiny guys that spills a drink on you. Yeah, he was played by some actor. <laughs> Robert, somebody or another. <laughs> Later on, you got to be in a film with him called Johnny McGuffey, which I enjoyed quite a bit. I was a teenager, so believe it or not. <laughs> um, and you got to like push him around a lot. Wasn't that a lot more fun than being? How how was your dynamic with that particular like sidekick character? Right. No, we've always been good buddies, so the work what we shoot is, is comes naturally because he's a very funny guy. He's always been that way, you know. Even when we were working on this film together, he was great with ad libbing it. Wasn't there some uh, yeah. series you were on for a short period of time with him? A series? Uh, TV show, Saturday Nights, I think. Oh, Saturday Night Live, oh, right, right, right. I hear what you're getting at. Yeah, no, we had fun on that show too, man. No, he's always been great and easy to work with. Yeah. Yeah, he's unavailable for phone calls as of today. <laughs> <laughs> it sometimes. Yes, sir. Thanks for your question and memory. Thank you, guys. How often do you guys have a chance to see each other? How, how, how many times do you get invited out to things like this? Yeah, it's probably three times a year, maybe. That's oh, enough. enough. <laughs> <laughs> I love my boys. Yeah. What are you guys working on in the future? I know you, for example, you have a degree in medieval history. Uh, sure. Yeah, it's not history, but um, medieval literature. But literature. when you go that far back, it's all kind of the same. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Actually, we've scheduled a lecture today, guys. This is a surprise. He is. He's a professor. Yes, I'm a professor of medieval literature. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. So I don't, I, the only projects I have are, are um, pretty specific to that, I guess. Do you, do you ever people call you looking for references or trying to pin down historical um, accuracies in the work that they're doing? No, not, uh, I mean, friends. <laughs> you know? I know a guy, I'm gonna call him right now. Well, I'm super nerdy, so like, uh, like all, all my friends from the old days are LARPers in, in the Society for Creative and Activism, and they're always like forever like writing stuff in Middle English and sending it to me, and like, um, but no, I haven't been approached to, to do consulting. I think that's a pretty specific gig, and, uh, and I'm pretty busy with my, my, my day job. Well, Although, I am, oddly enough, I am organizing a, um, an academic conference, which is really just for professors in the field and specialists, for scholars. What are you trying to say? None of us will be there? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, it's the modesty thing, like, yeah, like, uh, okay. All right, we'll but, it, uh, but it turns out Peter Weller uh, also is a scholar. And so this will have, I guess, this is a conference where Peter Weller and that squeaky kid from Weird Science will talk about Renaissance, way re Renaissance art. Robocop meets Beowulf meets Weird Science. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening. For you, what, what are you working on these days? I actually just talked my way into a movie uh, that they were going to give to a man. <laughs> I pulled up. <laughs> and I don't need no stinking man around. Thank you, Anthony. Nothing, and, I did nothing. Uh, I, I called him up and I pretended I was the role. I said, hello, this is Aaron Wheeler from Child Protective Services. Whom am I speaking with? And he's like, I don't have kids. But after that, uh, he came up the next day and he gave me the role, so I'm starting to film in a few weeks. Um, I have a very small role, but uh, I just got Billy Zane a role in it, and Eric Roberts is 
has a small role, and uh, Judd Nelson. That's awesome. Very kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, that was just cool. I'm shooting, uh, I start on the next Halloween sequel next week in Wilmington with Miss J.D. Lee Curtis. So let's talk about that. One last question before we wrap it up. Oh, okay. Um, so this is kind of a darker question, but being... Great. No, just curiosity, being young actors in the 80s, we've heard a lot more recently about the problems that you had as young actors, especially male boys. I just wonder, were there people in your life that protected you from that environment? Um, because we're hearing more and more, and you guys are definitely from that generation that we're hearing about. Sorry. No, that's For cool. all of you who didn't want that question. <laughs> My mother was always a very good protector. Yeah, she's very been very strong there for me. I'm good friends. A lot of good people that were there for me and protected me, yeah. The bottom line is you have to protect yourself. And if it happens to anybody now in the future, then you're not listening. I'm sorry, I just, I do believe that we have to be in charge of ourselves. And you can't put yourself into dangerous situations. And you have to start taking responsibility. And it's young boys, I'm sorry. When it comes yeah. to children, that's why my question yeah. is kind of more relevant to that. I think, yeah, it seems like in the 80s there were just a lot fewer rules, you know? Um, and I, that is a bad situation. I think parents are much more on it nowadays and really teaching kids, uh, hopefully, uh, to be more aware um, and, and understanding the world differently. But I think uh, an upside of that is that, um, uh, like on the set of Weird Science, it was a really loving place and I felt protected by, by Kelly. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I felt protected by Kelly. Um, I know, like, any time I was around John, um, or, or really any of the crew, I just felt like they had my back and were looking out for me, um, 100%. And so that, that's not something that I did or not something that I engineered, but um, if you were lucky, uh, interacting with adults could work out well. But I, I think it boiled down to luck. But I also think that uh, like five, six-year-olds need to have a class of etiquette of how to treat each other, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate, because that's when you start to learn what is and what isn't. I must have missed this question. I don't know what we're... So, no, it's interesting. What were you saying kids being protected from, though? I'm not well, sure if I got the intent of it. You hear a lot about manager moms and, unfortunately, oh, okay. situations where kids weren't protected, especially that generation. And just the idea, we have the Me Too movement, but now we're seeing a lot of kids that grew up through Hollywood who have really dark stories. And right, and who are taken advantage of in a range of ways, yeah. Right, and so you guys were very successful in your career, but you grew up in it, and so somebody had to be there because you guys aren't standing up and saying, yep, I, yep, that guy did that to me. Well, yeah, so, well, the, no, it's not a shit over here, but basically what Kelly's saying is true. I mean, I've always just been my own protector, you know, but at the same time, yeah, I mean, I had, for myself, I had a great family that was always looking out for me. So no funny shit went down. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I have to Thanks ask. Thanks so much for the question. No, but that's a good question. Thank you. I have to ask, as we get ready to wrap this up, for your favorite She's like, scene Please, let's wait. from this favorite scene from the movie <laughs> that does not involve the shower boys. Oh. Uh, uh, favorite scene. My scene uh, with the parents. Oh, that's a great scene. Have you ever thought how sad it is your son's only sexual atlas tossing off the magazines in the bathroom? Gee, Gary, you yeah, told me you were coming. Right, nobody protected us from that shit, right? <laughs> oh, I love these questions. No, for me, that was definitely one of them, yeah. And I think the stuff that one shot at the ending, and everybody takes off at the end, the Road Warrior uh, type ending, yeah. We had a lot of great memories, nothing but great memories. Definitely for me. What's yours? Well, um, I really like the actor who played opposite me, Judy Aronson, who played the girl that I ended up with. Um, and I just thought everything about the scene between um, with, uh, me and her at the end of the movie was so sweet. And I also liked her so much. And um, I liked talking with her in between takes. And I really liked that. Somebody call his wife, I please. <laughs> kind of stalking Judy Aronson. It's a whole other movie, Stalking Judy, 35 years later. Great. Okay. 
switch off his mic. <laughs> Let's get it. It's too and serious, too quick, didn't it? Talk to me. No? <laughs> <laughs> Guys, a big, warm, Rose City round of applause for our Can we do a selfie, guys? There you go. Get in, get in.